Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am showing you another challenge a crafty friend card. So here you can see the end result and the challenge was to case a card but now downsizing. So I took a card and you probably uh, noticed which card I am taking. Um, I will link to them but I already created three different styles of this card. Um, but now down downsizing so this means that uh, you just take an element from that card and you zoom in on that one and try to forget the rest um, to create a more simpler card so here you can see a piece of paper that i formed in some sort of stencil um, i drew this um, splatter myself and i actually was surprised by uh, the result i didn't thought that it would work um what i was doing but i started with an oval and then i started uh, adding some uh, some wavy lines in it and such it took me a while to cut out that part <laughs> i used my craft knife but i did it the night before and i i think i was like busy for an hour i'm not really handy with a craft knife um, and I also wanted it to be smooth, um, but if you have troubles with doing uh, straight lines, then uh, these um, <laughs> lines were horrible. Um, but I'm really happy with the end result of my splatter. Uh, and I wanted to create um, my sky, night sky, uh, space sky, um, going from the inside of this splatter towards the outside. So this time I am doing the darker color inside. Uh, and then going outwards with my lighter colors so you see I just keep blending and it took me a while to get it like perfect is a big word but um, to get it the way I like it um, but in the end I'm really happy uh, so creating your own stencil it can take a while um, <laughs> I also mentioned that I have a scan and cut um, but since I don't want to use it for my images because it's a bit yeah it, there are some harsh lines it's not as smooth as I wanted to I decided to cut it out myself so you can decide what you can do uh, maybe if you have a scan and cut or anything like that you can actually use it that would be really handy and less work um, but I must admit even I'm like recording two days after making this card and I still feel that hour of <laughs> cutting out my stencil um, so yeah but um, it was worth it in the end so just splattering some uh, white gouache and my L'Enfant liquid stardust on my background and then I can peel everything off so for this I was really really careful because of course I have taped like almost my entire panel <laughs> with purple tape and it's low tech so normally it would not rip or it shouldn't rip uh, but if you don't go slow enough sometimes you can really tear your paper so I went slow like crazy slow <laughs> but no tearing so that was the point um, and it worked so. So this was the moment where I went really really slowly because at this point the stencil sort of can come loose. Um, so I didn't want to shift it, I didn't want to rip anything. That's why I'm going extra slow now. And then I laid this background aside to start on my images. So there are a few spots where it's a bit blurry, uh, but I'm going to partially cover that up with uh, some stars so that you won't see that. I stamped out the images already on Nina using uh, Gina Key Design Amalgam Ink and I'm going to color everything in. Um, 
with my Copic markers, you can see uh, two uh, text balloons. Um, only going to use one, but I didn't know yet uh, which one I wanted to use, which um, sort of uh, twist I wanted. Uh, so I stand it out twice, uh, just to be sure. Also the big star, I only need one, um, but I'm go going to color them in both and then see which one worked out better. So for the rest of the coloring I will be putting on some music and I will be back after all the coloring is done. So now I am using the coordinating dies from Superstar to die cut all the images. Next up I decided to heat set my background uh, to be sure um, because of course you have the liquid stardust and then the quash and also the distressing but that one dries faster uh, but just the splattering uh, on its own can really stay long uh, wet for a long time so just to be sure I am heat setting it and it's not necessarily <laughs> heat set enough <laughs> you know me by now I always assume that it's dry uh, already but um, yeah I just decided to go really really um, careful with the rest so for the sentiment I am using seedless preserves uh, but this time the distress oxide ink to reference to my uh, background that I created as well. So I'm stamping it out multiple times to get a really good impression and then I am going to use some WOW embossing powder clear matte dull and you cannot see it on the package, but this one was sent to me by a lovely uh, crafter from Belgium and she is called Snow Coals and I'm going to link her Instagram um, down below. She was truly sweet in one of my latest videos where I used Distress Oxide inks. I said I'm going to heat set it uh, and not use embossing powder because I don't want that shine uh, of the embossing powder and she texted me and she said there are also matte embossing powders and I was like really and then we talked for a while and then um, she showed me and she, she suggested uh, to send me some uh, so I am going to use uh, this little jar from her I got more than one little jar I must admit and I'm truly thankful for her uh, because this is really amazing so the embossing powder while I think about it is that 
it's not matte matte um, but it isn't as shiny as you are used to um, and then of course uh, I'm using a combination of distress inks and oxide inks we all know oxide inks are chalkier uh, the finishing of it um, and actually with this embossing powder it looks like I use the distress ink do you understand what I'm saying it's like it it makes it a bit brighter but it's really not that shiny as all the rest so I really like it and I am planning to use it more when I am stamping things out with oxide ink so thank you very much snow um, but as I said I will link to her down below okay so now I am putting everything together using foam squares as well as some liquid glue and I am covering this whole background so so for this card I zoomed in on that adorable mouse no other mice are involved <laughs> and it's just checking out all the stars and I am still deciding where everything is going I knew that I was going to put a lot of stars on this background but where was still a, a big question mark <laughs> Um, but I just kept going and um, yeah, after adhering everything, I just had to adhere this panel on top of an American size card base and then this card is finished. So I really hope that you like this card design. As I said in the beginning, this is a Challenger Crafty Friend card. So Julia from Craft Room Adventures also made uh, a card um, and I will link to her card as well down below so that you can check it out I guess it will be marvelous as always I don't know what she created yet so that's always really exciting when we share it together um, yeah if you have any questions please leave them down below I am so grateful for you all to stop by if you like this video you can always give it a thumbs up and hopefully I will see you next time as well bye